We have here verse 11 of the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John. Jesus has just commanded the disciples, probably at a, something of a surprise to them, to have all of the people sit down. They sit down in this place. We are told by John that there was much grass there. Mark actually adds that there was much green grass there, a little bit of uh, color. And uh, so anyway, we understand this is taking place sometime in the spring of the year when the grass would be green. So the people have now sat down. The men are sitting together, apparently, and then the women and children off by themselves. And of course, John makes it clear to us that there were 5,000 on air, on dress, men, uh, let alone women and children who may have been with them in their company. And then we come to this critical moment in which the miracle is actually described for us. And we have Ela Ben. This is from Lombano. I take or I receive. This is the uh, aorist, uh, third person singular, second aorist, active indicative. So he took would be the idea of it. Un the conjunction indeclinable, therefore he took tus artus, the term that's been used to refer to bread throughout. It's the plural, so we have the plural article in the uh, accusative plural masculine, and then artus from artos, which means bread or loaf, and so it could be either he took the breads or he took the loaves. The subject of the verb, of course, ho Jesus, Jesus took, therefore, the uh, loaves, chi, eucharistesos. This is from eucharistao. Of course, our English word eucharist comes from this. The meaning of it is simply to give thanks. It's the combination of you, which means good, and then charis, a notion of grace, but idiomatically it meant to give thanks. This is the participle. It's the aorist participle, masculine singular. So, Jesus took the bread, and having given thanks, the aorist participle, diadokin. Diadidomi is a word that means to distribute through. Didomi, of course, means to give. The dia, which comes at the beginning of it, means through, the preposition. And so to give through is the idea, or to distribute throughout, which is certainly... Uh, the sense of what's going on here. So he took the bread, having given thanks, uh, distributed throughout toys. This is the dative plural uh, masculine um, uh, article. And then anakemenois. This is from anakemai. It's a different word for sitting down. Earlier we had anapipto, which is a different word to uh, sit down. This was the more common word. Uh, this is a participle once again. It's the present participle, and it's in the dative. Uh, and so it's uh, he, having given thanks, distributed to those who were sitting is the idea. Homoios, uh, this is the word which means likewise. It's an adverb. Likewise, chi, also, ek, the preposition, out of, tone, genitive, plural. Opsarion. This is from opsarion, which is a little fish. It's the same word that was used in the previous verse. It uh, actually is a word that virtually suggests a condiment. It's kind of a very small salted fish that, that uh, certainly didn't represent any significant uh, amount of uh, food. But uh, he took of the, uh, that same word then. This is, of course, the genitive plural. A pronoun that uh, essentially means as much as, and so, and then Athelone. This is from thelo, which means I wish or I want. This happens to be the imperfect. So it's the third person plural, imperfect, active indicative. Uh, so we'd render it, they were wanting. So he distributes to them of the bread and of the fish as much as they were wanting, implying, of course, fed them to the point that they were satisfied, that they had received as much as they wanted. There's no possible way to account for the description that we find here except to attribute it to some kind of an astonishing miracle, virtually creating out of nothing, beginning with such a minuscule amount of substance and multiplying it to the point that it could feed 5,000 men plus those who were with them, uh, can only be described as miraculous 
in uh, the most extraordinary extent. It does remind us of what took place when Jesus was being tempted by the devil and said, turn these rocks into bread. And of course, Jesus declined to follow that particular counsel from the devil at that point. And yet he did, in fact, create food. He did provide food. This, of course, was not his principal mission to simply feed people food that they could uh, eat and then hunger once again, but it did stand emblematically for the fact that he would be providing food, namely his own flesh, as he's going to make clear later in this text, which would feed people so that in some sense or other you could say they would never hunger again, feeding them to the very heart and core of their deepest need. And this miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 points uh, emphatically and dramatically in that direction.